Good day students, welcome to Theme 7 Projects Close Art. The outcomes of this lecture is that at the end of the lecture you need to be able to perform the capture of lessons learnt, you need to know how to utilize lessons learnt and you also need to know how to terminate or close out a project. So the steps of termination are first you plan for close out then you have your final close out and then you have your post completion project summary review or post mortem and we will discuss each of these steps in more detail in the slides to follow so the responsibilities in termination and close out for the planning scheduling monitoring and com um, and completion activities prepare and coordinate termination plans and schedules. So in other words the project manager has to prepare a termination plan. So when is this project going to terminate and according to which schedule is the project going to, uh, going to terminate. Plan to reassign project team personnel and transfer resources. Remember that projects are um, temporary endeavors and they create tempor temporary structures within our organizations. And at the end of the project, it is the responsibility of the project manager to make sure that resources and project personnel are reassigned elsewhere in the organization. You need to also monitor termination activities and make sure that all contractual agreements are completed. And if there is surplus um, material or special project equipment, you have to m make sure that those are disposed of um, correctly. So it either might be that uh, there is surplus um, materials that belongs to the project. If that is the case, remember that projects have long-term um, responsibility for maintenance etc etc sometimes and in that case the any any um, surplus materials must be transferred in an ordered way to the um, maintenance department then in terms of special project equipment it depends on whether the equipment belongs to the client or whether the equ equipment belongs to the performing organization obviously if the equipment belongs to the client it needs to be given back to the client in uh, the correct uh, um, order and with the manuals etc etc if it belongs to the project then it doesn't really belong to the project because remember the project is a temporary endeavor so it belongs to the organization so in that case it has to be then put onto the books of the organization through formal asset registers etc and it's the, your responsibility as the project manager to ensure that these things take place the final closeout activities is to close out all work orders that means that you you need to ensure that everything um, that was promised to be done is complete and you have to tell people to stop working on the project. It's happened to me many times when I was a practicing project manager that three months after the project is complete there are still people booking on the project. <laughs> so it's your responsibility as the project manager to make sure that people know that the project is completed, that they know that they are no longer allowed to book on the code for the project and that um, also that the team is satisfied that all the work that needs to be done on the project has been completed. Then if you have subcontracted work you need to approve it and you need to um, then pay the subcontractors Notify all departments and stakeholders of project completion. As I said, sometimes people continue booking on your project long after it's completed and this might be because their functional manager has not been told that the project is complete. And then if there's a project office, you need to close that down. If there are any project facilities, you need to close that down. And of course, your project books then have to be up 
updated um, all the information on what happened on the project has to be filed whether it is in um, in physical files or whether it is in virtual files and all this information needs to be available to other project managers in the organization uh, because remember that this information forms part of the knowledge assets of the organization. So if a project manager in future wants to know how long did your project take, what wha were the deliverables, etc., etc., they need to be able to either access the physical or the virtual files. Then in closing the contract, uh, one of the things that we sometimes forget is the attention to side items um, versus the end items. So when we talk about this Boeing simulator, this whole Bo Boeing simulator is a side item in the delivery of a, a, a Boeing system to a airline. Um, so this doesn't really look like a side item because it is a relatively comp complex um, piece of technology. It is motion based. Um, I've actually flown in one of these before and when you fly in them they normally take you to land at the Hong Kong, at the old Hong Kong airport because the old Hong Kong airport was notoriously difficult for pilots because um, the old Hong Kong airport um, the approach you went through uh, the the main uh, town of, of, of Hong Kong where all the skyscrapers are so it was a quite a difficult one to land and so um, that's the one that, that they like to fly you in my secretary on the day actually got um, nauseous in the <laughs> just from the simulator <laughs> because it's completely motion based now other side items that uh, one could have are manuals uh, tools and peripherals sometimes you deliver um, well especially if you are delivering a Boeing system to a airline you would deliver the tools needed to also maintain that Boeing system especially important uh, custom-made tools so if you have a a specific screwdriver that was developed as part of the Boeing uh, to take off uh, to take out screws you need to deliver that screwdriver with um, the Boeing system and then user training and that's where this simulator comes in because that's how they train users but sometimes even on simple projects user training is part of the side items of what we need to deliver in order to make sure that uh, the product of the project can be used in future okay so then um, we then negotiate adjustments to the final contract. I'm not going to go into this in detail in this course because you do discuss it in uh, project resources where you talk about uh, procurement and the different types of procurement and so remember that uh, depending on how the contract is worded um, there needs to be negotiation around what the final amount is that will be paid especially if you have say a cost plus um, incentive contract at the end the incentive needs to be calculated and both the parties have to agree that this incentive or that the incentive has been calculated correctly All right, then we come to the project summary, summary evaluation. Um, this is your post-completion project review or as we also sometimes call it, your lessons learned session. So when you do your post-completion project review, you look at your initial project performance, the cost and the schedule objectives. You then evaluate the soundness of the in objectives in view of the initial problem or needs. So remember you now have 2020 hindsight you know exactly what happened and what went wrong um, and what can be improved etc etc so you relook at your original objectives and um, you decide to what extent did you actually address the initial problem or need and you make sure that the needs that the end item um, was were supposed to be to, supposed to fulfill are being fulfilled by the end item. 
they are sometimes evolution of objectives and um, so in this case what one would then do is document the reasons for change we would document what is the final project performance with respect to the final objectives and we look at the effectiveness of project management, the relationship among managers, project team members, subcontractors and suppliers and the customer. So I don't know if you remember when we did the close out in class, uh, a part of um, the ideas that, that you guys came up with in terms of what went well and what went badly related to the relationships that you had in the group and it also related to the relationships that you had to the learners on the day. So you will see that um, this effectiveness of relationships is normally a theme that comes through when one does a post-completion uh, post review. Then uh, you also have to look at the termination process. So what does the customer say? Is the customer satisfied? Because obviously if the customer is not satisfied, you have to take steps and sometimes those steps include starting a new project um, to, in to ensure customer satisfaction or if the customer was very satisfied um, you also need to document that and you want to uh, d determine you know how did you manage to satisfy the customer so well so that pre uh, project managers after you can also learn from that then if we have installed or developed a product that needs installation we then do a post installation system review um, this can happen, uh, you know, once the system is up and running and it is fully operational and then we evaluate the fully operational in end item system and it focuses on the end item system. So is it um, operational? Are there any issues? Is the customer unhappy with um, certain things that we might have to fix, etc., etc.? This then desire, uh, provides operation and maintenance information for the system's designers. Because remember, we don't want the system designers to now go and make the same um, operation or, or the same mistakes that impact on operation and maintenance in future um, as they made on the previous project. So typically, this evaluation of the fully operational end item system might take place three to six months after the project is installed. That's to make sure that all teething problems is um, have been sorted out and at the end of the day, you want to evaluate how the customer is experiencing the system once it's up and running and it's running properly. So it addresses is the end item doing what it was intended to do? Is the user getting the benefits expected? What changes to, to the system which fulfill the, the user's needs? So this is in essence to make sure that your customer six, down, six months down the line is still satisfied and as an output of this there might be quick fixes that you can make or it might, to lea might lead to a further project that is registered uh, to make changes that, that are necessary. Okay, then when we talked about the post-project review um, with the team uh, here are just the practical steps that one can take and these are the steps that I went through with you in class um, and I've just written them down here so that if you want to repeat them in your work environment you can do that and I also assume that you use this process when you cap captured the lessons learned from your career day stall project. Okay, so to capture the lessons learned, you need all your team members involved. Sometimes you also want some of the stakeholders involved, depending on how closely you've been working with the stakeholders, and also, of course, depending on the relationship that you've built with the stakeholders. So if a stakeholder is particularly negative and um, cross with you at this stage, it might not be uh, helpful to have them in the close-out meeting because they might bias uh, the whole meeting. And the main thing is that you as an organization want to learn so that you can improve in future. So it might make more sense to bring the feedback from those stakeholders in written format to the meeting for discussion by the team.
The reason why you want all the team members is because different members have different perspectives. The software guy and the hardware guy have looked at this project from a completely different perspective and so they will have different ideas on what went well and what can improve. And then I suggest that you use the nominal group technique because it gives participants an opportunity to generate the ideas individually. It also allows shy or reticent individuals to voice their opinions because, because they are given the opportunity to write down their opinions and hand them in, in an anonymous manner, they are far more likely to, uh, g to actually give their opinion on what um, happened. The ideas are then discussed and as I said when we did the close out, if there's animosity in the project you get everybody to use the same color pen and to write with their left hand so that people feel comfortable and um, they respond to you know what went well and what went bad badly in an honest manner. Okay, this is all the equipment that you need uh, to do the nominal group technique and here is the procedure. So first you brief the team, you tell them what, is about, what, what it is about, you emphasize that the close out is not to look for scapegoats but the close out is to capture the lessons learned so that in future we don't make the same mistakes and in future we also do the things that went well on this project in the same way because we've already decided that that, that, that works. Right, so then there's the idea generation of what went well. You want the people to silently generate the ideas. You then give them pieces of paper to write those ideas with. Then step uh, uh, down with um, and they then hand in those ideas to you. Then step three is the character characterization of what went well. Um, and that's the process where you as the facilitator st stand in the front, you read out the ideas and you stick them on the board um, in, in different places and you put ideas that are similar together. Then step four is idea generation of what went badly, so it's very similar to step two, again individual idea generation and they write them down and then categorization of what went badly which is very similar to step three except now we're just focusing on what went badly and then at the end of the day you as the project manager then generate the report. Okay and you will see in the slides I have spelt out uh, the procedures in, in quite a lot of detail so that if you want to use it in your working environment uh, you, you've got steps to follow and you should be comfortable with being able to do this in your environment and then in the last thing is <coughs> you then take the slips of paper to generate the close out re report and as I said in the in the the practical example of when we did the close out, it's useful to capture the verbatim information, but that verbatim just means the, the actual words that were used in the session in an appendix and then to summarize the information in the final report. Okay, so that, ladies and gents, is basically what project close out is all about.